In this video, I'm gonna tell you some of the things to look for if you wanna buy your first time horse. Let's go. Welcome to Becky's Homestead. Number one, you want it to be really, really friendly. We like them friendly, like look, Thunder's licking, he'll <laughs> nibble. No, Thunder's. Whatever they do, I'd rather have them too friendly and kind of a little too much in your face than someone that runs to the back of the pasture. Or there's also the type that will stand 10 feet away, but they'll never come any closer. I, I am not interested in an animal like that. We want to use our animals, so we need them to be family friendly. So also what you want to look for are really good feet. You don't want them to be cracked. You want a good hoof because if you plan on using your animal, um, you need good feet on them. Of course, regular scheduled farrier work on your animal is an absolute must. You have to make sure that you're in a financial position to be able to afford to have your animal's feet done on a regular basis or just don't buy a horse because it's really not fair and it's that important to have the feet done. This is what a healthy hoof looks like. It doesn't have any cracks in it. It touches the ground all the way around. And even if the feet aren't perfect when you get them, they might be a little long, they, you don't want cracks in the hooves. You can cure the cracks. It's a big pain in the neck. And if you can get a horse without them, it's much better. As you can see, none of our horses have cracks in their hooves because we manage our horses well and they're healthy. And we ride them barefoot and they have great feet. And a farrier is a man or a woman who comes with their tools and trims the horse's hoof. The hoof keeps growing just like our fingernails do and they need to be clipped and filed every two months. Even though Thunder's on the small side, which that's the way we like them, short and stocky, Thunder is put together very nicely. When Thunder stands up, and Thunder's 18 years old, and he looks fantastic, and he's 100% healthy. And when he stands up, his feet are under him. His feet don't angle back to hold his weight up. He's supporting his weight on all four legs equally. Some horses will stand with a more forward stance. Some will stand with a little bit of a back stance. You don't want any of that. If the horse isn't sore in its feet and legs, it will stand like thunder, square. Very nice, supporting all his weight. Also, you wanna look at the top line again. You don't want a bony, spiny, knobby right here you'll see a knob hippie looking horse you know i guess it's okay to buy a horse that's a little underweight but there's a difference between being a little underweight and having a super weak top line i'm looking for a horse with a you know a good foundation on the top line at least and then you can develop that with your lead line work also um, you want to look at their eyes and their face. You want them to have bright eyes like it's paying attention and it's looking, you know, it's looking out there at the world. If it's standing there like it's in a daze and a, like, you know, the lights are on but nobody's home, so to speak, that's not the kind of horse I like to pick. I like to choose one that's looking around, it's interested in its world around it, it's got curiosity, you know, it wants to go sniff something and investigate. That's the kind of horse I'm looking for. And if it's not trained at all, you know, that's kind of a little red flag to me. I don't care what age it is, it should at least be able to have the halter on and be led around with a lead line. So, you know, if you show up somewhere and it doesn't have a halter or the halter's grown into its face, like they put it on when it was a baby and they've never touched it since then because they can't catch it, forget it. So you wanna put the halter on and what I do is I'll have somebody else walk the horse and I'll look at how it strides. You don't want the front feet to clunk when it walks or the back feet. You want a clean step, nothing's clunking or touching. I also trot the horse because a lot of times they won't clunk when they walk but when you trot them, they'll have it, it changes their gait a little bit. Same thing. 
You don't want any clunking or touching of any of the four feet. A nice clean stride. If you wanted to look in their mouth and look at their teeth, you know, you want to see, of course, horse teeth are gross, <laughs> but still, you'd like to see a nice bite in the horse's teeth. You don't want a big overbite or underbite because really, the way they chew their food and utilize their food, it translates into the condition of the horse. If it has absolutely horrible conformation in the teeth and mouth, it's never gonna chew its food up and get all the nutrition and the value out of the food, or you're gonna to have to do extra work to either mush it up or grind it up or whatever. So I like them to have a good mouth on them too. I like to look at the teeth and make sure they line up and everything looks good. Another cost you're gonna to have to consider into your expensive expenses of owning a horse is dental work. If you want your horse to be happy and healthy, you do need to have its teeth floated. So that could be anywhere from 100 bucks to 200 bucks, depending on where you live. And you might need that done once a year, or you might be able to go every two or three years. But that is a price you have to factor in to being a horse owner. This is a test Scott came up with, and I think it's so funny, but it's very, very good and smart to do. Scott will stand near the horse like this, and he'll jump up and down. And if the horse just does what Thunder does, he kind of looks at me like, what are you doing? It's a great horse. Some horses will literally shuffle away from you. They're so terrified of the jump test. But you want a nice, calm disposition that you can stand and do the jump test and the horse doesn't even care. Like, <laughs> Thunder's not even looking at me. So make sure you do the jump test, but always be very careful when you're doing it. Sign up for Becky's Homestead newsletter. Go to beckyshomestead.com and sign up on the right. You'll get articles, news, and specials from Becky every month. Unsubscribe anytime, no spam. If you like this video, click the like button. It really does help us a lot. And if you want to be notified every time we post a new video, click the subscribe button. If you would like to help support Becky's Homestead so we can make more videos for you, when you do your shopping, if you go through our link on Amazon, you don't pay one penny extra, but Amazon gives us a small percentage of every purchase. And that helps us to produce more nice homesteading videos for all of you out there. The link is at the top of my website.